Hey guys, it's Ray here at allofourhomes.com and today I want to take you along with me for an antique shopping haul. One of my favorite places to look for things for our 1905 folk Victorian farmhouse while we're renovating it is Community Forklift. They are a nonprofit as well as a vintage and building supply store. So they have a lot of programs that benefit the community. If you're looking for vintage decor, this is probably not the right place to go, but if you are looking for light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, door hardware, anything uh, that has to do with renovating your home, this is a great place to go if you're in the DC, Maryland or Virginia area. Plus, they will come and pick up donations if you have plumbing fixtures or tile or other types of equipment. Um, you can call them and likely schedule a pickup. They're also kind of quirky and have a lot of fun elements to take a look at, so it's just enjoyable to walk through and see what they have. We are in the midst of doing a sustainable renovation for our 1905 Folk Victorian farmhouse. And you can see more of that if you follow our channel and also if you take a look at our sustainable renovation playlist. So for my antique shopping haul, I did make a list in advance just to make sure that I didn't get too distracted with what I was looking for, since these places always have so many things that spring up different ideas. So one of the issues we've been having is this very leaky faucet in our upstairs bathroom. We have a beautiful clawfoot tub um, and this old faucet has been leaking nonstop for probably over a year now. Well, I do have to say that I actually don't let the water leak or else our water bills would be absolutely insane, but I turn it off um, in the back and it usually hurts my back to do that every single time. So the three things on my list were to get a dining room pendant light to replace the one that we have that is more suited for a craftsman home to get a new kitchen pendant light to go over our sink and then also to get a new diverter or tub faucet for our clawfoot tub upstairs so that it doesn't leak. Now I couldn't help myself and I had to stop by and look at all of this door hardware. I think part of it is because we just found this historic key in our attic and I will link to that video to you all but it was an exciting find and I'm just endlessly entertained and I just really enjoy looking at all this old door hardware and thinking and imagining where it came from and the different time periods. And there's nothing like actually feeling these different materials in your hands. It's very different than buying a knob from Home Depot. But then off I went to check out the lighting because the first thing on my list is to get a new dining room pendant light. Now our house is a Scandinavian farmhouse style and there are a couple different types that would be appropriate for that. You could go mid-century modern Scandinavian or farmhouse style or just modern Scandinavian. So I really like this light fixture. This chandelier was kind of a unique one. It looked like it was handmade. And then this one is more of a modern style, uh, but also very simple and clean lines. And I like the darker antique bronze finish that it looks like it has. Um, and then I found this one that looks like just a plain black finish, and it also is probably a modern fixture um, that is just made to look very simple and farmhouse style. But I think that this chandelier would be too big for our dining room. We have a pretty small house. But then I discovered this amazing chandelier, and it looks like it might even be hand-painted. I mean, what a find. This looks so Scandinavian farmhouse to me. If I had a country house in Sweden, this is the light fixture that I would buy for it. It is so unique, and this is something that definitely needs to find a home, but I don't think it's the right fit for us. Then starting to look at some of the more modern light fixtures, I found this one that was $1,000, which seems like a lot of money, but when I looked it up online, it retails at about $1,400. This is a Thomas O'Brien light fixture, and this glow pendant is very similar to what we have in our breakfast nook that we have from West Elm that's a lot less expensive. 
But just look how beautiful this fixture is. It really works with the farmhouse style and it was such a special find there. I mean, if you buy one here and then you buy one retail, you would still save around $400. And then I came across these bell light fixtures. I think I may have even used these on a project before, but they are only $20. So for the set of two, you could get them for 40. Now they are very large, and that's something to think about when you're shopping online versus in person. You can see how much bigger this is. It's like the size of three hands. And I think that this would work great in a larger space, but our home just wouldn't be big enough for something like that. Then I came across these Pottery Barn light fixtures, they're uh, rattan, and they seem to be very popular right now and would work with a lot of different house styles. And then I also came across these beautiful light fixtures from Restoration Hardware. And they're a little bit masculine or industrial looking, but I don't know, just thinking about putting two sconces above our fireplace, they just look so nice. and. They give out just a little bit of light, but look almost like a candle. And then around the corner on a dusty shelf way down low was this Mudo light fixture. And Mudo actually is a great company to take a look at if you're looking for Scandinavian items, whether they be light fixtures or other things, because they represent all sorts of different Scandinavian designers. It is called the Unfold Pendant Lamp and it is made by a Swedish team called Form Us With Love. And the lamp typically retails at $335, so that would be around a $200 savings to buy this light fixture. I've even used it on a project before for this Japanese izakaya. Japanese and Scandinavian style work so well together. If you haven't heard of Japandi, check it out. Now, even though I love this light fixture, I'm not sure if it's going to work for our dining room because the lighting is mostly down lighting and I feel like in a dining room you want a little bit of up lighting too, so it's something that I still have to think about for a while. The next thing that I looked for was for a kitchen light. Now, we have some down lights that we had installed to replace our 2x4 fluorescent light fixture that was originally in our kitchen and those have been working great but we don't have a light fixture right over our kitchen sink and i think having a pendant there is always a nice thing um, it's also something that is nice to leave on like in the evening and just kind of create a nice mood yeah this one that i found was for 45 dollars um, and i like having that clear glass um, but the other smaller pendant glass lights that i was looking at just had too much of a traditional look um, and I'm not sure that they would be the right fit for our kitchen either, but I did have a lot of fun looking at this. I mean, a light with a pulley is always a fun thing to look at and also to try to use. Another option instead of a pendant would be a ceiling mounted fixture. Um, and I just was taking a look at these quickly, but I don't think that that's the look that we're going for for our Scandinavian style farmhouse. Looking at more farmhouse style vintage items, I found these really cute vintage creamers. And I also found these straw baskets. I think they're supposed to be planter pots and they came in two different sizes, but the color would just be perfect with our house. I just haven't thought of what I could use them for yet. And then I found this secretary desk that of course has a keyhole. I don't know why I'm obsessed with keys right now and keyholes, like I said before, probably because of our attic find. Um, but I loved this vintage desk and the details that were on it. It just looks so much like what I saw when I was in Sweden and really reminds me of a sort of hygge corner that you could create. This chair also seems very Swedish to me. Maybe it's the color blue but it looks like it might be newer and somebody did a sort of shabby chic thing to it. Um, it. It was oversized, which was kind of nice if you want a nice comfortable seat. And then I found this chest, which just looked like it would go perfectly in a cozy reading nook. And then looking at these fireplace mantles, they are painted white and I just haven't seen that before. They have these really pretty details on them with a mirror and it just seemed so Swedish to me. 
Maybe because the fireplaces in Sweden tend to be white and usually you'll have dollar horses on top, but I just really enjoyed the way they looked. And then continuing on my way, I found all of these doors. I think it's incredible that all of these doors have been kept out of the landfill and finding a good door is so hard. Um, I'm not sure how you would get the right size, but it looks like they all are written on there, so I'm sure that they can help you out at Community Forklift if you need to replace a vintage door in your home. So after crossing off my next item, which was the kitchen light, then I moved on to the final item, which was for our tub faucet. So off I went into the plumbing area, and I took a quick peek at this sink, we actually wanted to replace our pedestal sink in our bathroom upstairs because the one we have right now has these corners. Although it is very pretty, it takes up a lot of extra space that we can't use and creates this sort of awkward condition by the tub where we can't get through to access some shelves around the corner. So it'd be nice to have something with a rounded edge and I just saw this and was taking a quick look at it. Of course I would replace the faucet here. Um, but I just wanted to see what they had in stock that was curved. So finally, I made it over to where the, the faucets were, and with the tub faucets, it looks like there just wasn't anything that would work to replace our leaky faucet. I think faucets just don't last as long as you might think, and so perhaps they just didn't have much in stock there. So as a last resort, I went outside to look at the actual clawfoot tubs that they had in stock. I'm sorry for the lighting here. It was really bright and the settings on my camera were off. But even looking at these clawfoot tubs, I didn't find anything that was faucets that were attached to it. So the only find that I really had was this Moodle light fixture that I will be thinking hard about and trying to figure out what makes sense for our dining room, but please let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Should we get the Scandinavian Moodle light fixture, or do you think we should go with something else? I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about it. So please let me know in the comments below. And now I wanna share with you my top five reasons why it's good to shop at a vintage or antique store. First of all, it's great to be able to see and touch what you are thinking about. When you shop for things online, I'm sure this has happened to everybody, but sometimes the size of something that you get is gonna be far different from what you imagined because you saw it online and it doesn't have any sort of reference for scale. So being able to see something in person, it just makes such a big difference. The second thing is to learn from the experts. And at a lot of these antique shops, the tags were very informative to me to be able to look for certain light fixtures or brands that might be in line with what I would like. I also could see the different time periods and people that are working at that antique store typically have a lot of knowledge about what might work for your home in that time period. So ask them questions and learn while you're on your antique call. The third thing is that you can save money. Now, I know that a lot of the prices at Community Forklift are a little bit more than you might usually find, but that's also because the money goes to a good cause for all the different programs that they have. Every single light fixture that I saw here was a lot less than what it was would be online, and you also don't have to pay for shipping. And the fourth thing is that you can find something special there will be some very unique things that you will find at an antique store that you probably wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. And when they pick up those items, they go fast. So it's good to go in and check in when you are looking for something and just keep your eyes out, you might find something special. And the fifth thing is that it's good for the environment. I've talked about embodied energy before, and if you buy something that is used, then it is going to keep it out of the landfill. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We put out videos every Tuesday. Thanks for stopping by our home.